Martin. My name is uh, Linnea Oskarsson and I work as a Dean Bank Curator for Ornamental Perennials at the Swedish National Dean Bank. And this is Signe. Here she's sitting to, to the right of the bride and groom in this photo from 1939. It is her daughter Gunvor who is getting married. In the middle of the photo, in front of the wedding couple, you can see a peony. And this one, Signe planted it here in 1923, when she and her husband had finished building the house in the background and had just moved in. The peony came from Signe's parents' home, just a short distance away, and Signe was very proud of this peony. She used to say that this plant was not to be touched ever. This peony was unique. So the only thing that has happened to this plant since 1923 is that the small fence around the plant has been improved. Today it is Signe's granddaughter who grows the peony and she faithfully follows Signe's advice to fertilize it every year with moose droppings from the forest behind the house. And today the peony has actually been divided once when Signe's granddaughter sent a division of it to the nationwide inventory of older ornamental perennials that was started in Sweden in 2003. So today, both this peony and its history are preserved in the Swedish National Gene Bank for vegetatively propagated horticultural crops, or the Swedish National Gene Bank, as we say for short. The National Gene Bank is Sweden's gene bank for heritage garden plants, and the plants preserved here have been cultivated in Sweden for 70 years or more. The gene bank was opened in 2016. So even if the plants kept here are old, the gene bank in itself only turned six years this summer. The gene bank is state funded and it's located at the Swedish University of Agricultural Sciences in Alnarp, just outside the city of Malmö in the south of Sweden. All in all, 2,300 accessions are preserved in the gene bank. The collection consists of both fruit, berries, vegetables and ornamentals, such as roses, perennials, trees, bulbs and pot plants. The collection includes both local Swedish cultivars, cultivars developed by Swedish plant breeders, and foreign cultivars with a long history of cultivation in Sweden. Since we work with vegetatively propagated plants, the Swedish National Gene Bank is a so-called field gene bank. This means that the plants are preserved as uh, living, growing, full-size plants planted in long rows. All the seeds are cut away and thrown away to avoid loss of cultivars due to cross-pollination. The gene bank is five hectares or 50,000 square meters in size. And today we will focus on this area of the gene bank. Here you find the ornamental perennials and this is where I spend most of my days. The perennial collection consists of 470 different accessions, which together represent 150 different species and hybrids. What they all have in common is that they have been grown in Sweden since before 1940, and that they all have a documented history of where they were grown and by whom. These perennials, like all plants preserved in the gene bank, were collected through large nationwide inventories conducted in the early 2000s. The inventories were run by the Programme for Diversity of Cultivated Plants, POM. This is the Swedish National Programme for Plant Genetic Resources and is organised as a network 
including national authorities, the plant breeding sector, NGOs, botanical gardens, growers associations, open air museums and many more. The program started in the year 2000 as a result of Sweden signing the UN Convention on Biological Diversity in 1993. Tom's first assignment was to search for old garden plant cultivars. This assignment was prioritized because there was a risk that these cultivars would otherwise disappear. Many had already been lost and now it was important to find those that remained. To find these old cultivars still in cultivation, POM started eight uh, inventory projects or calls for old plants. They started between 2002 and 2009. One of them was the call for perennials or perennopropet in Swedish, where we were looking for ornamental uh, perennials grown before 1940. The call started in 2003. The question we all asked ourselves before we started was, would there be any old perennials left? Were we too late? We worked in two different ways to try to find these plants. We made a call to the general public. We also trained persons who made inventories for us. The call was spread through TV, radio, garden fairs and articles in newspapers and magazines. And to the left you see an ex to the right you see an example of such an article. And this one was published in two 2005 and the headline says wanted ornamental plants with a 